Hi, welcome. This is Clem the Lector. In this video, I will present a few products that I received from Maker Fabs from China. One of their activities is a producing kit for makers, and they sent me some samples. Please note that I am not affiliated to them in any way, so if I think it's no good, I will tell you so. The first product is the Raspberry Pi Embedded System Development Platform RAPDPP. This is a head for the Raspberry Pi together with a Raspberry Pi 0W and a kind of uh, enclosure. Actually it is a bit more than a head as it completely envelops the uh, Raspberry Pi. It comes as a kit of parts, but I already assembled it. The head uh, sports a 3.2 inch uh, 320 by 240 pixel uh, ILI uh, 9341 type TFT display controlled over SPI with resistive uh, touchscreen stuck on it. It has a speaker and two MEMS uh, microphones and an analog to digital uh, converter in the shape of the popular ADS1115. Furthermore, there are eight extension ports for uh, I2C, a GPIO and serial communications. It is powered over USB-C. The extension ports are for so-called MABI modules, which is MakerFab's take on Seed Studio's growth modular system, and the two are 100% compatible. A MABI DHT11 temperature and humidity sensor is included in the kit. What I like about this kit is that it makes Raspberry Pi usable in a real-world application. Now I can see myself building this into a pretty enclosure and fix it on the wall to control something. On the software side, however, there is some work to be done. Out of the box, the system runs a slow demo, which doesn't do it justice. The Raspberry Pi needs more than a minute to boot, which is a known Raspberry Pi problem, and it boots into the desktop. You can see that when you connect the monitor to the HDMI connector. The humidity temperature demo doesn't work for me most of the time. Running the same demo on an 8-bit microcontroller would probably be faster and more reliable. Anyway, I am sure that with a bit of tuning and optimization the system can be sped up quite a bit. Pico Starter Kit contains all the parts you need to do all the projects presented in the book uh, Get Started with MicroPython on Raspberry Pi Pico. These parts are listed at the end of chapter 3. The official Raspberry Pi Pico guide to Get Started with MicroPython on Raspberry Pi Pico uh, can be bought for 10 British pounds, about 12 euros, but it is also available as a free PDF download. The kit contains a Raspberry Pi Pico board without headers mounted. The Pico book uh, assumes this is the case and explains how to solder the headers properly. This does mean, however, that a soldering iron is needed to get started. According to the Pico Starter Kit's uh, webpage, the Pico board in the Starter Kit should have had the headers mounted, but that was not the case for my kit. But the header strip is included, so I soldered them myself. Besides the Pico board itself, the box contains a Raspberry Pi Pico pinout map, uh, two in my case, a short USB cable, a breadboard, and 140 jumper wires in a small box. There are also two peer sensors uh, needed in chapter 7, an LCD, and some more jumper wires. Resistors, uh, 330 ohms and 10K, 10 of each, a 40 pin header strip, a ring with 12 WS2812B addressable RGB LEDs, sometimes known as NeoPixels. In the small compartment is a buzzer, a potentiometer, a little bag with push buttons that are not listed in Chapter 3 but needed in Chapter 4. Finally, 20 LEDs, 4 colors instead of the 3 as listed in Chapter 3 and 5 of each. The LCD appears to be a clone of Sparkfun's SER LCD, without a quick connector, but with full color RGB backlight. The official Sparkfun display costs $20, while the Pico Starter Kit costs $35, so it is pretty good value for money. The Pico Primer Kit consists of a Raspberry Pi Pico, plus a baseboard with a small TFT display, a buzzer, three push buttons, three LEDs and six growth compatible connectors. Also included are five MABI, aka growth modules, a servo and an ultrasonic transducer, and wires to connect it all together. Out of the box the Pico beeps and then runs a push button demo. To do something else with it, uh, you are supposed to use MicroPython with the Tony IDE. You must also download the examples from GitHub. 
Now I found this a bit confusing, but the thing is that you must copy the code and lib folders you downloaded from GitHub to the Pico board first before you can run them with Tony. You should open them on the Pico and not on your computer. I tried several of the included examples. In my case, the accelerometer example crashes after a while and the weather demo was hard to get going. When it didn't work, I had to disconnect the Pico from my computer and then reconnect it to get things going again. I'm not sure if this is due to MicroPython, but it seems to be a bit uh, unstable on the Pico. What I like about this kit is that you can display the results of your experiments on an LCD instead of in a serial terminal. It's a bit like a small computer. It encourages users to program nice user interfaces. It helps teaching programming in a more playful way. Personally, I intend to make this kit my default Pico development platform, but not for MicroPython. I will use C and C++ instead. With its display and push buttons, it is great for applications that require a complex user interface. Okay, that's it. I hope you found it interesting. If you too want me to review or unbox a product or so, please contact me first. Do not just send me something, as I already have way too much stuff lying around. I have become very picky. Also, keep your product samples ecological, so I won't feel too guilty when I bin them. Because we at Elector like the Pico Primer Kit, we put it in our shop, but with a different name, the Pico Experimenting Kit. Also, the kit evolved a bit and now includes a Mabi WS2812 module with 8 addressable RGB LEDs. The link to the kit is in the description below. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click or tap the bell button. Thank you for watching.